the way that PD Works is set up, which is the wiki that I'll be using, you can get in without having to create an account. And so for students that you're working with that don't necessarily have email accounts or are not allowed to use them in school, for example, with some of the K-12 schools, this is one way that you can um, use a wiki without making them all get the accounts and that sort of thing. Besides which, for workshops, if you get the account, you have to go back to your email and check it. And sometimes I've found that's a little confusing for people to work with as well, especially if you're trying to keep things moving. So, um, how are we doing on passwords? I'm seeing a lot of red X's yet, Phil. Um, <laughs> He's working on them. All right. Hi. Hi, oh, thank you. <laughs> so for those of you who are still coming in, um, the green check if you have received your password from Phil and a red X if you're still waiting so that he can see who to send them to. In the meantime, I'm going to take you into a little application that I really like. And since I had to restart my machine, I need to get logged back into this. Um, it's a mind mapping one and my idea for the afternoon was to take you into the wiki, have you work as a student on a couple of short little projects to demonstrate a couple of the things there and also to show you some other little applications that I found free on the web that can help with the whole process of storytelling from beginning until end. Um, and so this first one that I'm going to be sharing with you is actually a brainstorming application. Um, by my, Claire, you should receive a uh, chat box, private message from Phil to get the password. Did you send one to Claire yet? Uh, Claire, right? Yes, yeah. I did send one, but I, yeah, it's demo if I care for our example. Yeah, send it to us. To Vicki. Claire, I see that Phil did send you one. Did you ever get it? It comes again. For some reason, these direct messages don't seem to be doing very well. What's the next one? Any another one? Let me send it to you again. All right. You're going to keep working on that? I'll keep doing it. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to come show you um, web exploration, and we'll do a little brainstorming here. Okay. This is Webspiration, which is actually the web version of Inspiration, which many of you may have heard about, maybe even used. And the fact that they put it up on the web for free just totally thrills me. Um, I'm not sure. It still says it's in beta. When it gets out of beta, I'm not sure how long it will stay free. But for the time being, we can use it and enjoy it. So what I thought I'd like to start with is um, some ideas of what you think of when you think about storytelling. Just throw them out there in the chat box and I'll add them in. I have what we call a rapid fire mode and I hopefully can keep up with some of the things you're thinking about. So in the chat box, what do you think about when you think about storytelling? So now I'm going to get overwhelmed. <laughs> So we have character development and we have making videos, good. And what else? TPRS, yes. <laughs> this is not going to be TPRS. Creativity, um, but I have had a number of TPRS people in my workshops um, who got uh, something out of this. So. Actors speaking. I need to be a, to, as fast a typist as Judy. <laughs> Happily ever after. All right. Plot. Very good, Carl. Which ones of these? All right. Who hasn't gotten theirs? Because I've sent them all back. That's right. Phil said that he has sent all the passwords out not, again. Not, not quite. Not quite. There's a couple that just came in. So for those of you who are still coming in, if you have gotten your password, please change to a green check. 
If you do not have a password yet, please click the red X and Phil is looking for you. Phil will be, Phil will be sending you a personal message in the chat box. And so you should look for that. It'll say moderator Phil 2 and then your name. And it will have a login that starts with demo and a number and a password that has an animal number and a fruit. So take a look for those. Again, if you do not have it, please click your red X. This is very disconcerting, talking into the nether with nothing coming back. <laughs> All right. Um, back to our my inspiration here. Um, you see where I started just doing um, what they call flash mode. And every time I hit the return key or the enter key, it pops out another bubble. And once we start looking at what kinds of bubbles we've got there, we can pull in some new ones from the side. Um, I'm not sure you can see me moving. phil has got his document up. So I'm going to put here traditional storytelling. And we have some of these buttons, like the plot button here. It's probably for from traditional storytelling. And I can start moving these bubbles around. Um, actors speaking. That would probably be traditional storytelling, do you think? Happily Ever After is definitely traditional storytelling. So I can start rearranging some of these bubbles. Character development. One of the things that I also wanted to have you think about a little bit is do we necessarily do traditional storytelling in our classroom? What are some of the other things that we do in language class that aren't necessarily traditional storytelling, but telling, telling stories of other types. What kinds of stories would those be? Myths, OK. Let me start another line here with my. Some of them are saying that unrecognized. OK, at this point, you should not be using your password and login. Login and password, we're not there yet. I'll be taking you to the wiki to use. So um, I'm not sure, Lane, where it is that you're trying to put the username and password in at this point. But you're not there yet. Don't use it. Wait until we get there. Terry, Bill should be sending you login and password. He said he just sent it. And hopefully, you'll get that soon. All right, so we're back thinking about language class. What other kinds of stories, if we want to call them that, do we do in language class? Um, I'm going to throw one out here, like um, descriptions of photos might be another type of a story. And I'm going to use that kind of in quotes, a story. Maybe a narrative is a better word for it. Anything else you can think of? Descriptions, myths, we do uh, role plays, simulations, there's a good one. Anything else you can think of? There are a number of these making videos, animation that we could put under giving directions, Judy. That's a good one. I can spell it right. Giving directions. Um, um, what was I going to say? Oh, that we could put a whole section under technology here. Um, but I'm just going to do a little, once we get these going, I'm going to connect these up. All I do is drag the little diamonds out to the boxes, and we can connect them up. Timeline, that's another good one. All right. I wanted to start out with this one because it has a really cool feature that I find really useful. If you're doing brainstorming with students beforehand, this looks like still a bit of a mess here. But all I have to do, or all your student would have to do, is once they get to this place, they start rearranging their bubbles, they start organizing them in hierarchies and clumping them together. All I have to do is click this one button up at the far left. I'm not sure if you can. Yes, you see where my mouse is going. It says outline view, and with one click,